Hello everybody, Mr. Hominoid. That is the cheeky monkey. This is where Theo walked out. Now everybody thinks he walked out and walked past the van right here. No, because there's the corner. He walked past the van just here around the corner. And I'm having fun, right. Now, the van was parked just there. Don't worry about it. Just, right? That's where the van was. And Theo has walked up here. Now, pardon the sound effects in the back. I've got a kangaroo underneath the back wheel. Right. Now, Theo's walked up here using his mobile phone. Now, this is the exact route that Theo walked. And then here, he turns left. And he walks up there. And then as he walks up here, now you see the laid back people. Shorts, dirty cars, t-shirts, whatever. Now, this is then where he comes to and he gets up here and this is where everybody else gets confused. Theo walks up here and he sees this. All this road construction was not here. He comes right up to here and he sees There's no more road. But actual fact, it's a walking trail. So Theo sits there and sees this walking trail. Then, backpackers or other people come from the other direction. I surmised, like everybody else has told me, People come down from the Byron Bay Beach Hotel. And then they then walk down to go to Cuddly Corner. Cozy Corner, sorry, Cozy. But they don't want to walk up the other road directly from the beach. There's too many hills. Now Theo was up at 7 o'clock in the morning. He left leaves the... Cheeky Monkey at 11.03 or 11.06 p.m. Is that one or two beers? Now, question for everybody around the world who watches this video. What is the alcohol strength of beer in his home country? What age is he allowed to drink alcohol? And over here, it is 18. And if he drank the standard beer over here, which would be VB or 4X or 2 E's. And then you yourself can Google and find out the alcohol content. So if he's 18 years of age, and he's used to being in a country that does not drink to the age of 21, it's going to hit him in the mind, especially at 11 o'clock at night. So if he's been up at 7 o'clock in the morning, already been down the beach like all the other backpackers, been travelling around, walking around all day long, so you've got 7, right round to 7, that's 12 hours, then another 4 hours later... He's walking out of the cheeky monkey. Now I'm going to turn around and then I'll show you where he went. Now, so I turned around and I stole the car. Isn't that good? They have one million views. Mr. Hominoid can't even start a car up. Right, so then Theo's walked down here. He's met these other backpackers. Now you see how quiet the street is. Now, but look, if he was in trouble, why didn't he yell out to all these houses? He could have screamed out, help! Somebody would have come out running. But there's a sports field. Now, I made the big mistake, and I said he went through a little gate back there. He didn't. If we have a look here, there is a, a footpath right there goes right across the whole park. 
Now I'm going to come back on the other end of that put bar, but I'll leave the camera running. And I'll just keep the car in second gear. So we're now going the speed of Theo. Not really, because we're driving. And then what happens is he walks across to the other side of the park. Now these people are walking from the other pub, I surmise that's where they come from. Because they all tell me, oh no, we don't walk up over the headland, it's too hilly. We go across the back streets through the park to get to the beach, because then it's level. Now this is how level it is. This is still lower than the Byron Bay Beach Hotel. And Theo's walked up here. It's still lower than the actual ocean level down here than the Byron Bay Beach Hotel. If this is where the other people come from. So he said, oh, another backpacker. Oh, okay, I'll go there with you. Yeah, 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 let's go. Oh, my bad accent, right? So then Theo walks up here, comes around here, GPS showed he walked over there, around that pole. He walked around that corner there. Then he walked up here. He walked outside that truck. Then he walked up around here. And then he walked up this one hill. One hill. But they're talking. And they're talking and talking. And they're not really paying attention. And then he gets up here and he says, oh, well, that's one hill. Okay. So then Theo comes up here. And now look what's here, people. What's that in front of me, Chris? A van. What sort of van is it? Is it a backpacker? Yeah. Now say that again for the camera. What sort of car? Backpacker's van. A van. But they're backpackers. A backpackers, yeah. So why would that backpacker now be parked up here? Now there you go, right on camera. Not planned, not staged, is it? No, we just drove up here, he's there. Because they walk down the trail. You see what he's done? Now, so what I'll do, I'll put you on pause, I'll get out of the car, and we'll have a little chat to the backpacker and whatever else, and then we'll get out and I'll come back, and, and, and it's pissing, it's about to, about to bugger off down here with rain, so I've got to be quick. So there we go, we've got a backpacker's car, and he's left his jumper on it. Hello. Here he comes. All right. Okay, well, the man here with me, he's, hang on, I don't need any names, I'm not going to show your face, it's camera's recording. So you're from France, French. Yeah. You're living in Brunswick. Yeah. You've been here for how long in Australia? A couple of years, three years maybe. Three years. Yeah. You didn't hear about Theo Hayes, the missing backpacker from Byron Bay who disappeared? Oh, that was a year ago or something? It was two and a half years ago. Yeah, all right. June the 1st, 2019. This is where he disappeared. Here? Right here where you're parked. Alright. Right, let's right, come over here and I'll show you. Right. So down here, that's what he did. He walked down here with his friends. And they all walked down there down this trail. Mm -hmm. And it winds all the way down there, down to the beach. Yeah. Now his GPS tracking, uh, this is the French backpacker's backpacker stand next to me not my friend right so you can say hello you can say something in french hello <laughs> Je m'appelle Alexandre. say that what say that's my name <laughs> what was it i say je m'appelle Alexandre. oh there you go so there you are there's a real french name so i didn't make it up right <laughs> right now he went all the way down there onto the beach and then he walked right over there to cozy corner all right onto the top over there Underneath the top, right up in the corner of the beach, and he was there one hour after the tide started going out. And then he turned off his telephone tracker. Twelve hours later, unbeknown to him, his OPPO phone made in China, which is why the Australian government doesn't want Hawiwa or OPPO in Australia, because the Chinese communists plant secret tracking devices in them, hoping that a member of parliament or a politician or somebody in business 
This has been proven. It's not a theory. It's been proven. Australian Federal Government will not let any Hoewas, Opos, into any government facility or any politician and anybody in business should never ever own one because the secret spyware that this Australian Federal Policeman after Theo's disappearance June this year 2019 I think it was June his family cracked his code to the Google account mm -hmm. they accessed it sent it to the private investigator here in Australia you then also gave it to the uh, Australian Federal Police Cyber Crimes Unit and he accessed it. And he said that phone had a secret tracking device. And then at midday, it shows it walking around the headland around to the point on the north, directly north tip of Byron Bay headland. And then the phone battery died and then nothing's ever seen or heard from him again. The phone has never been found. It has only recovered that information off the Google. And that's how they found out it had secret tracking. Because he turned it off at 12.05 a.m., I think, or close to that time, at night. So, then I checked the tidal charts for Byron Bay on that night. And they're exactly one hour and five minutes behind, behind after... So 12 midnight at Fort Denison in, in Sydney Harbour at 1.05 a.m. here, it's the same tide. So if it's low tide down there at 12 midnight, it's low tide here at 1.05 a.m. See, yeah. it's exactly one hour and five minutes behind Sydney Harbour. Yeah. So out of that deduction, we worked out Theo's walked out into the current, decided what every backpacker does at midnight, <laughs> because it's cold and the water's warmer. Mm. Think about it. How many times do you like to have a hot bath? You go for a dip. How many backpackers do you see jumping in the ocean? I've got four surfy brothers. They love surfing in the cold because the water's warmer. They come over and say, yeah, it's great, the water's warm because yeah. it's cold. See? He was in the 1st of June, which is the middle of our winter, or as Americans say, fall. So he's gone for a dip. But what he didn't realise, from this side, there's a big current, and it comes around the headland, chucks a anti-clockwise turn around a little island, then it comes around, around that point, swoops in past the beach, comes down here, and then goes out to sea. So he disappears in the ocean. He's gone out in the current. Now, then I googled shark attacks. Now, you tell me what place in Australia has the most amount of shark attacks per annum? Western Australia? Byron, maybe? Byron. 47 a year. All white pointers. All Byron Bay headland. <laughs> Forty-seven a year. Forty-seven a year. Twelve into sixty. Or well, there you go. It's about four a month. Four attack a month. Four per month. Four twelves is forty-eight. Forty-seven, right? Four a month. Mm -hmm. That's one a week. That's more than Melbourne gets. More than Sydney gets. More than the Parramatta and Sydney ever gets. Never heard. Not that much. There's news stories. Three years ago, girls went surfing out on Main Beach, Byron Bay, in front of the pub. They had to paddle out on their surfboards to that big rock island past the old shipwreck and sit out there and wait two hours for the lifesavers to come up from Brunswick with their boat to come out and get them because the sharks were going around the island trying to get the girls. Mm. Yeah, there's many See, all people have got to do, go into YouTube and do a research, YouTube stories of sharks in Byron Bay. Mm. And you'll see how many different encounters sharks are chasing people up the beach or chasing surfboards. Or in June this year, a guy had a 12-inch hole bitten out of his surfboard and a big 
police crown sergeant is sitting there holding the surfboard up with a great big massive 12 inch by 12 inch hole in it yeah and that was your main beach yeah right so where and so can i ask you why are you filming because it's a youtube channel oh that's a youtube channel yeah so anyway that's why i'm doing it i've come 900 kilometers to do this story 900 kilometers yeah to do the story Anyway, that's it there, Mr. Hominoid. I hope you enjoy that, and I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'll Anyway, well, this is where Theo last walked through, between that sign and that sign post there. That's a fact. That is on his GPS tracker. He walked right through that point there. My sympathies go out there to the family. Now, I'm going to go you around and show you the, the other way. He could have taken, but it still wouldn't have made any difference because he still would have went down to the beach. So we'll come back down around the other side. But you can actually say, right there, Theo Hayes walked. Right there. And I travelled 905 kilometres just to show you this. So, there you go. Mr. Hominoid at Patreon, if you appreciate this and you're somewhere around the world and you're curious about him, this has cost me a lot of money to come all the way up here. And the rain and all the other dramas. Flooding, we've got flooding up here. It's cost a lot just to make this one five minute video but i know you appreciate it mr hominoid of patreon if you would i love it i appreciate it thumbs up leave me a comment i'm not doing this for the money but it does cost me money to make the move do the film and my amount of knowledge that i time and research i put into it so to give everybody clear up the mystery where did theo go now this is where theo walked up the road now, if he would have kept going straight ahead on Tennyson Street, T-E-N-N-Y-S-O-N, -N -N, and he come to that dead end, he thought it joined up here with this other road, and it didn't. I've already just showed you previously in the video, it come to a dead end, and then it turns into a walking trail and this is it back here we'll now come into the other side of the walking trail now i'm going to leave the camera on just so you can see how far he would have had to walk if he walked this way through that dead end of tennyson street across the walkway and then we'll drive instead of walking now you got to remember if i drive at 60 k's an hour he's walking at two kilometers an hour so you got to time the time limit by 30. now don't forget that now this is where he would have come out This is why the other backpackers, they walk down here. It's not an isolated area. It's got the Byron Bay Youth Activity Centre. There's the trail there. Now you notice there too, this is the problem with Byron Bay. No camping anytime, any street, parks, reserves, foreshores or car parks. Right. I'll get back to that. Now, please remember that sign. That sign is very important relating to why so many backpackers walk up here and buy cars in Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne and they travel around Australia because the New South Wales government closed down the Byron Bay Railway Line from Casino to Byron Bay to Mwollombar. And there's many videos, documentaries, and there's a documentary on why backpackers are buying cars in Sydney because they simply say, we've got our surfboards and all our gear and there's no train to Byron Bay anymore. And therefore then they were selling their cars on the streets in Sydney. And pardon this, but this is the truth. It's on many of documentaries. They were defecating in the public street because they were sleeping in their cars around Potts Point in Victoria Street all down the old 
King's Cross car park and they were then using the toilets there. But then when the car park at King's Cross kicked them out, they then all moved over to Victoria Street, Potts Point, down between Ward Avenue, uh, Ward, no, not Ward Avenue, um, Ward comes up to Maclay Street, um, Wild Street, no, that's Wild, no, Ward's up the other end, hang on, I think, I'll think of it in a minute, I think off the top of my head and I'm all the way up here by and by and that's Potts Point in Sydney I'm talking about. Right, so they used to hang around Victoria Street from the Garden Island end up to the King's Cross Railway Station, right? And then they were buying cars and selling them out front of the hostels in Hughes and Orwell Streets. And they said, oh, yeah, 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 there's no trains up there. There's no public transport anymore. You've got to go buy a van. So that's why you see that sign there, no camping because all the backpackers then no longer could come up here by train and then afford a backpackers hostel. Now this is the this is the way Theo could have walked if he walked the way he was going. But he didn't. He was intercepted and in his GPS tracking he went back with the other people back across the park. Now don't forget that. But if he would have walked this way, this is what he would have had to put up with. Now, he would have walked over there on that side of the road, which is not very great. Oh, look at this. Look at this bright turkey. Look. See? That's what they're like. They don't even look. See, people in Byron Bay are on another planet, right? They don't even look. He just walked straight out across the road, did he? He didn't even bloody look. He just walked straight out. And then, now, if you watch the road, can you see what I'm doing? Can you see what the car's doing? We're going uphill. See, watch, look. The car's slowing down. Very slowly, it's slowing down. So that means we're going uphill. So we just dropped four kilometers an hour. Now, now we're going up a hill. This is why the backpacker said, no, don't go that way. It is too hilly. Because if you're on two legs and you're going to walk up this great big hill. And... Now, is this it? Callows Beach Road. Now, then he's got to go down this hill. Then it comes around this bend. You wait for it. Hey, guess what? Up another hill. So do you think a person that's been up since 7 a.m. in the morning, 11 o'clock at night, has had a few drinks, and wants to walk... Look, we're still going uphill. Are we going, are we going uphill? No, we're going down. No, we're going up. It feels like we're going up. That's going down. That was coming up. This is going down. Because there's a, there's a drain. There's a speed up where the drain is. That's up, this is down. Now do you see why they walked across the park, way down the back, down there? Now do you follow it? Now they're going downhill again. And look at the size of the hill we're going down, all right? Let's speed it up. Just so people get the idea, see how high up from the, high up from the top of the hill, it is all the way down to the beach level, the level of the beach, that's the key word. And then you've got to come all the way around here. This is what I said on my YouTube live. And he's got to come all the way up here. And then he's got to come all the way back. Look, he's still going downhill. You see how high the hill is? Yep. It's about three, four hundred metres high. And then Theo would have walked straight out there. But he didn't. Because he went in the other way. But he did walk up there past there and up there to Cuddly Corner but you want to go down and have a look let's go down and have a look come back to your sack I've got to park the car hey what well where's the bin
You've got to remember, if Theo was up here, and this is 11 o'clock at night, this is how busy this car park would be. Because remember, that's why I showed you no camping sign. See? Now let's read what it says. 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. No camping. Because the railways got closed down in 2004. So therefore then, oh, parking meter out of order. That's quite okay. <laughs> you like to buy and buy a sense of humour? <laughs> now just stopping here this is what it's like walking through Byron Bay going down to the beach now all that debris in there is from storms and whatever else and the rangers only have to put it beyond the fence line see because they've got this fence so therefore then you've got no reason to walk over there now if you've got to walk through that you can trip over and break your ankle and whatever else because it's Sticks and Christ knows what. But that's where the homeless people sleep. Right? And what they used to do was bury their tents in the sand. I spoke about it before. But that was between North Byron Bay to Brunswick Heads. Now I'm gonna I've got to save my memory card. I don't know how much memory I've got left. I'm gonna come down there on the beach. But here I am, I'm just leaving the grass. Yeah, look at that. There's a piece of clothing. I said in my YouTube, before on the live stream, people leave their stuff behind and nobody picks it up. So, that's proven that one right, correct? Right. Can anybody see many footprints? Very few. And they're old. They're blown over. I hope you appreciate this. There's a the rain coming. We're about to get soaked. This is where Theo went. Right up there, cuddly corner. Cozy corner. Now I'm walking down here, down to the water's edge. I'll come back to you down there. Now isn't this a lot different? There's the ocean, way down here. That's where I just walked from. Way up there. There's the towel. Now it's nice and hard sand. Please note where the ocean is. It's low tide. That way up there is Cozy Corner. I just thought of something while I'm walking. Actually being here, what was going through Theo's mind? I'm on a beach and there's nobody here. He's left the other backpackers behind up there. He's by himself. Someone's being funny. Look, he's doing his exercise. That's it, come on, run, son. Right. No, I always, when I do something like this, I always have somebody with me. Because I don't want to be, end up another Theo, because he was up here by himself. If I get washed out, it'd be Mr. Hominoid Mystery. Where did he go? Man, I'm running out of breath. We're not even halfway there yet. <laughs> Woo! Look at the steep and back. Look at the. That's a Byron Bay lighthouse, way up there. Now get your mag now do you get the magnitude of the cliff. They the police scoured that for weeks. Good on them. They done a great job. Police, SES and all the other locals. I thank you. I don't even know you. You don't even know me. I didn't even know Theo, but thank you. I knew I know that if that was me missing, I'd say thank you for trying to find me. Whew. 
you think I ain't puffing? Is my face red? It's red. Can you see the strength in the current? Can you see the waves? See how they swirl around. Have a look. Right, we're here. <laughs> Man, what a walk! <laughs> And he had a couple of beers before he left the pub, if he did. I'll say Mr. Hominoid's favourite saying, people look, but they don't see. S-E-E. -E. What do you see that you don't realise? Look where the ocean level is. Now my friend, without, there's the buttons, don't touch them. Aim the camera at me. Now, everybody, we are gonna walk where Theo did not walk with the mobile phone. Let me be very clear. Did not walk with the mobile phone. Turn the camera around. Theo's phone, just hold there. Theo's phone was found over there, high up on the beach. That's where his phone was found. Turn over that one. See the walker trail? There's a walker trail, and that's where he went up. Over that way is the gap in the rock face. That's where he did not go. People think that's where he went. But, but it clearly shows on the map he walked up and walked up the trail that direction. Then he walked back down to there. So he's come back from a southwest projection over to there. Then he's walked over to there and left his phone. Now, have a look what's over here. This walk down, not this way. That is a walking track where the locals walk but the backpackers won't because if you turn the camera around down the beach who the hell's going to find you? Who the hell's going to find you? There's nobody here. What time is it now? Six o'clock? Something like that. Six o'clock, five o'clock, right? Summertime. He was there at midnight. So, Theo's walked up there, across the top of the sand. I walked on the hard sand because it's low tide. He was here one hour after high tide, which means high tide. Come on, go this way. 
high tide was up here at this tree and look at all the footprints from the night before and they have fires up here isn't that what the isn't that what the people said they have fires illegal fires and there's obviously more firewood more burnt firewood more burnt firewood and what we call a sitting log footprints everywhere look it's a sitting log so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a use of this unbelievable somebody's car keys Well, there you go, people. Did I plant? Did I plant that? No way. And look at the rust on it. That's got a phone tracker in it. Right. Here comes the rain. Right. Can you hold the camera for me? Watch the buttons on the top. I'm going to go back a bit. Pardon me, I'll get an I'm going to pull my pants up on this one. I've got no knee joints. Appreciate that, please, people. I've got no knee joints left in my legs. I've got to have two artificial knees put in this year, next year. I'm Theo, and I'm, being, I'm not being smart, because this is exactly where his phone was. Up here, in this corner. And I can see why. I slowly pan the camera around. Keep going, right round, 360. Because it's midnight. He's 18 years old and he's a backpacker. He's from Belgium. He's travelled halfway around the world. He's sitting here all by himself. He's had a couple of beers. He's had a long day. He's tired. Turns his phone off just after midnight. He wants to save the battery. Whatever reason. Now there is no signs of the phone moving around like a scuffle. Even on a satellite, a meter's mark will be shown. If he ran around trying to get away, you would see a bunch of little dots everywhere. There was nothing. It was sit off. That was it. Sit off. Next day, from here, the sitting log, whether or not this was here, I don't know. But it looks like to me, it's been here for quite a while because it's pretty far up the beach. Because turn around, see that other log? That come in on the tide. Well, this is up a lot higher. Turn back to me, thanks. So, I'd say he sat here and he thought, this is beautiful, clear night, midnight, stars are out, tired, I'm relaxed. Fresh air, I'm enjoying it. See the water over there. This side of those rocks, the tide's going out for one hour. So he thinks, I'm going to go down here for a dip. Is he going to take his phone with him? You're not going to take your phone in salt water. You're going to leave it up there by the log where it's safe. Out he goes. He gets washed out. There's a big current. You didn't know. There's a big current comes around this way. Goes around an island. Comes around the headland. And there it is right there, out there in front of you. Let's go down and I'll show you the current the best I can before the sun goes and before the rain gets here. 
and we're going to keep these keys. I'm going to call these CO's keys because of the Theo's expedition. You know we didn't have a car, but I'm going to call them Theo's memory keys. A reminder how easy it is to get lost on a beach in Australia. So someone's lost their keys, and unfortunately, Theo's family lost Theo. I just hope I bring some sort of sense to all this mystery to what's going on to other people around the world so you understand a little bit of common sense about the great barrier reef and the great oceans of Australia's tidal currents along the Pacific East now look at the water there let's just watch it you tell me if you can see what I can see as a former surfing guy. Is that getting closer or what? That's definitely getting closer. Because look, where that is now coming around the rock where I went up. See, now it goes back. It's a false sense of security. There's a rip just there. Can you see it? Is that a rip? You're a surfy anywhere around the world. Is that a rip? Is that the water going out next to the rocks? Because all the water's coming in over here. Comes across here. It's got to go out somewhere. So why is there any white waves there? Look. How far do the white waves go? All the way down the coast. As soon as you get to that one little spot. Hey, 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 that's coming in. There's the rip, that's where it goes out. That's the drain hole. Can you see it now? Look at that wave going sideways. Can you see that? See the wave going sideways? Because it's hitting the water going out and it pushes it over. Now if you're a surfy anywhere around the world, I want to hear your comment. Is that the drain hole? Is that where the water goes out? And there is a proven fact that's on Google Earth. You can see the big current goes down the coast, goes out that way. 47 shark attacks every year on average. Three fatal. That are reported. That's a big point. That are reported. How many surfies have been out there on a surfboard and never bothered going to the police and say, oh, bloody shark bit me board today. I just thought I'd better let you know. They'd say, oh, no, I'll just go home and I'll fix it up. That's 47 reported. How many go unreported? How many car crashes go unreported? How many shoplifters never get caught? Can you see the point I'm trying to make? There's the way it's coming in. Where's the way they're coming in? No, because that's where the current's going out. Anyway, from Mr. Hominoid down here, down under. Come on, get away from the waste. Look, it's catching up to us. <laughs> that's how quick it comes in. Look how quick it is coming. Look. There you go, look. It's just come around the rock. It just went right around the rock. So anyway, we're out of here before the tide comes in. Because where Theo was, the tide was still up here. Now, can you stand up here and just watch the button there? Put your hand in. Right. You can't see the button. Now, go up there. Now, that's experimental. Hold the camera to your right side level.
Yep. realize how far uphill that is. It's a long way. So for Mr. Hominoid, Mr. Hominoid at Patreon, you you like this? Do you think my theory sound? You, you see me find a lost car key where Theo disappeared. I'm going to call that Theo's key. Exactly the same place where he disappeared. We found a key. I wish I could take Theo home back to his parents, I really do. But that's two and a half years ago. So what else do I do? So for me, Mr. Hominoid, <laughs> 900 and something k's from home. Theo was probably 9,000 kilometers from home. I don't know how far is Belgium from here. My sympathy, truly, to his family. Or relatives. His godfather in Melbourne. I just hope that shows some sort of light on where he was by what the GPS satellite tracking showed, what 60 Minutes Australia showed, and Ken at over at um, uh, the private investigator. Sorry, uh, I forgot his name. Blip, blip, blip. <laughs> I know that's going to be in hits. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. <laughs> Gamble. Ken Gamble. Hey, got it. Right. Down in Sydney. And uh, the federal policeman. And you can see how dark it's already getting behind me. So for Mr. Hominoid, Byron Bay, I made it. I tell you, I got through floodwaters. Torrential downpouring storms. The house I was in last night got flooded. They had water around, all around the house. I mean, it was about half a metre deep. That where I was staying. <laughs> Walked out the front at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> after the rain finally stopped after five hours of torrential downpour. <laughs> and you couldn't, you couldn't get out of the house. It's just surrounded by flood water. Got up there this morning. It's all gone. The power of the water, the power of mother, mother Nature. How many times have we seen the dam break? How many times have we seen floods all around the world? So think about it. The power in that ocean, a little Theo trying to swim out. Nobody around to save him. He's up here all by himself. Breaks your heart, breaks my heart. Oh look, couple of crabs. Wind's blowing this way, the cat. See the crab? See? Crab hole. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going. Bye for Mr. Hominoid. Hope you, hope you appreciate it. Mr. Hominoid of Patreon. Any donations greatly appreciated. This has cost me a fortune. Five days to do it technology stuff, all the rest of it, all the other expenses, meals, accommodation, whatever, all adds up. And I don't get paid for it by YouTube. No one pays me. I'm doing this to give that family peace of mind. Let them see where he walked. Well, here comes the rain. See ya.